I designed insane sunglasses inspired by earth, wind, water, and fire. We're gonna use the best 3D printing technology, the most advanced software, and the best artificial intelligence tools to make some crazy designs. Now, I've been designing products, especially eyewear for years now. And I'll be honest, it can get kind of repetitive. As you gain knowledge, you start to focus on creating designs that you know will work well based on your past experience. For once, I wanted to create completely crazy designs just for fun and to see if I learned anything new. At the end, I'll show the frames to another professional eyewear designer and have him judge them on a scale of one through 10. Most sunglasses are all about understated, refined coolness. You know, we're talking Tom Cruise from Top Gun, any of the Matrix characters, John Lennon, Audrey Hepburn, the list just goes on and on. But we're not gonna be understated here. We're ratcheting things up to 11. Something like Elton John meets cyberpunk insanity or Lady Gaga weirdness. And normally I could never do this with a paying client who expects a sellable design. But we don't have that constraint this time, so we're gonna go wild. The only constraint is that they need to be somewhat similar to a regular sunglass form factor. So the first step to creating cool new designs is using cool new tools. Stratasys approached me and asked if I wanted to try out their 3D printing technology that can replicate pretty much any material you want. It can even make completely new materials that are both aesthetic and functional. So with endless possibilities on the manufacturing side, it was time to figure out what I was going to make. I think this collection is gonna be inspired by natural elements, but first I wanted to come up with some interesting designs in Gravity Sketch. Gravity Sketch is an app where you can draw in virtual reality. It's literally just like drawing in 3D. I like doing that because it's easier to get a sense of proportion when you can spin the drawing around three-dimensionally. And I created a lot of different designs here. While I'm designing these, I'm thinking about the expression that they create on the person wearing them. We all rely on social cues to understand what others are thinking, and we get a lot of that information by looking into another person's eyes. But because sunglasses hide the wearer, eyes, it's really hard to know what the person is thinking. That's why a person wearing sunglasses usually looks like they're totally in control and they're too cool to care. They might be dying on the inside, but look totally calm from the outside. That's actually why I came up with the four elements idea. I like the idea of a natural disaster happening all around your face, but you still look cool and calm and collected to the outside world. Plus, I really like Captain Planet as a kid. Mm. Wind! Water! Go! So I started with the line drawings in Gravity Sketch. Then I picked my favorite ones and refined them a little bit further. Now, I'll be honest with you, making weird designs was a challenge for me. I've spent a really long time learning about what makes a frame look good on someone's face, and it was hard to break these old habits. In the end, I came up with a few designs that I thought had a lot of potential, but really, they didn't look anything like the four elements of earth, wind, water, and fire. And that's where Houdini comes in. It's a software that's usually meant for visual effects, but I've slowly been integrating it into my product design process. It's a perfect tool for the kind of organic, natural aesthetic that I'm going for. At first, I just start with a basic stock frame shape to see what the colors and textures look like. Some of these simulations are just insanely satisfying to watch. This one's for fire. I basically just did a simple animated noise simulation. It looked pretty good, but it was a little bit too subtle. We're going for wild and crazy, right? So let's see how far we can take it. Okay, that's too far. Okay, that's that's way too far. Then I also tried some particle simulations for fire. It looked cool as an animation, like sparks flying around everywhere, but when I 3D print them, they won't be moving, and it just doesn't look as good when it's not animated. So I stuck with the original design idea where I added the noise on both the inside and the outside, and having it encased in clear material was really cool, almost like the fire on the inside of the frames was slowly starting to melt the exterior. We're going for crazy and badass, and nothing says badass like flames is an at right Guy Fieri. Yeah! Oh my god, that's hot! Seriously though, I know flames can be very tacky, but you gotta admit, this does look kinda cool. So anyway, the water simulations are probably my favorite animations. You can have water spilling into any shape vessel you want in Houdini. So I made water flow through the glasses frames as if they were hollow. I tried different speeds, viscosity, and amplitudes, and paused the simulation at a point where I just thought it looked the coolest. At first, it was just particles, but the 3D printer wouldn't recognize that actual geometry, so I turned it into a mesh. I even added some little bubbles to it. And lastly, I added some fluid-like ripples to the outside of the frame to make it look like flowing water. If you think the water simulation is cool, you should click the subscribe button below to see more content like this. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Back to the video. 
Wind was by far the most difficult thing to illustrate because you can't really see wind, right? You can only see its effects on other objects. So I made these big wispy dust clouds that look like they're being blown around. Once again, it looks cool as an animation, but as soon as you pause the animation, it really doesn't remind me that much of wind. So I made it so that each of those little dust particles had a trail behind it. This has a lot more visual movement to it, even when it's static or not moving. Then similar to the water frames, I added a texture to the outside of the frames, but this one sort of mimics wind blown rock formations. The earth frame was probably the most straightforward. It wasn't an animation at all. It was just a bunch of different fractured patterns and textures applied to a pair of glasses. This one's probably one of my favorites though. The geometry for this one was just insanely complicated. I mean, you see that blue green color over the design. If you zoom in, those are all individual points that the computer had to calculate. I have a really powerful computer and it still took over a minute for it to load this model. I think the file was like eight gigs or something before I simplified the mesh and exported it. So at this point we had some pretty cool looking material ideas. The next step was exporting those colors and textures to be 3D printed. I was really struggling with this step though because everything was just exporting as a plain white model and none of the color was exporting properly. I tried using Houdini and Blender and just none of it was working. I spent like two days trying to figure this out and I finally ended up using another software unfortunately. This software is not the best at making complex materials but at least it worked. Either way, this is a $200,000 3D printer that I'm using so in spite of software issues, I still had high hopes. So the samples arrive and they're pretty awesome. The resolution is insane, the level of detail is spectacular, but they do look a little bit different from what I saw on the screen. And at this point, I was a little nervous about how the sunglasses would turn out. I mean, sure, the materials might look great on the computer screen, but if I can't translate that to reality, it's a big issue for the project. I was preparing myself to get absolutely roasted by the other pro eyewear designer I was gonna show these frames to. But Yariv, the design director at Stratasys, was telling me that I was thinking about this all wrong. I was treating this tool too much like a typical sample process with a vendor. Normally, you might only order just a few samples from a manufacturer. If you ask for too many samples, the price and time can really, really add up. But with this printer, you can make a bunch of different material variations, print them before you leave work at night, and then have them ready by the next morning. You can experiment with a huge range of ideas, and one of them is likely to be exactly what you want. So for this next run, I was prepared to print as many samples and ideas as possible. I was still a little bit worried about having to use this rendering tool that was kind of limited though, so I needed to get creative with an alternative. With the fire and water frames, rather than creating the colored materials in Houdini or Blender, I created these two dimensional patterns with Dolly 2. Dolly 2 is an artificial intelligence that can create images for you based on a text description. I told the AI that I wanted some cool seamless textures, one for fire and one for water. Then I basically took that 2D image and wrapped it around the 3D model. This is called texture mapping. While texture mapping is really a very common 3D rendering technique, using AI image tools to do this is pretty new. I got some awesome results that would have been really time consuming to do on my own. And this is a great example of how constraints can be a good thing sometimes. Without the software constraints of this project, I never would have thought to explore AI generated textures. And I have to say, they look pretty impressive on the screen. I was just really hoping that it would translate into real life. I tried a bunch of different material settings for the printer, so I was sure that at least a few of them would turn out okay. The materials for earth and wind were a lot more straightforward with just a clear exterior and a solid interior, but it was the fire and water samples that I was worried about. So a few days later, when I got the samples, I was seriously impressed. For the first set of samples that I got, a lot of the issues had to do with the print settings that I used because I just didn't really know what I was doing. But with this round of samples, many of them came out exactly the way that I hoped they would. And a few others came out even better than I could have imagined. I mean, look at these things. They look like little flaming Hot Cheetos. One thing that was kind of weird was that the wind and earth samples came out absolutely tiny. I'm not sure what happened here. I mean, like, what is this, a material sample for ants? But besides that, the prints were absolutely gorgeous. The fact that these samples are so tiny, but still so detailed is pretty incredible. A whole bunch of these look really awesome, but these are ultimately the textures I choose to move forward with and apply to the final frame designs. Once again, big shout out to Stratasys for these 3D prints. If you wanna learn more about this 3D printer, click the link in the description below. So we've made good progress, but the hard part was definitely not over. The next step was to refine the frame silhouettes. I used the designs I made in Gravity Sketch earlier as a starting point 
point, but I actually changed them a fair amount. This part is extremely time consuming. It's basically just making tiny changes to the frame silhouette until it looks right. You have to remember, we humans are very sensitive to tiny proportional changes to the face. And glasses are basically just an extension of your facial features and expression. I like to use a photograph and check to see how the glasses look on an actual person. Other times, I'll even print out the frames on a piece of paper cut it out and wear it to see how it looks. As long as the expression of the face is neutral and nothing creepy or weird, it's a great starting point. So for the water frame concept, I was going for something very approachable. I made these shapes really round and fluid, no hard edges or angles, straightforward enough. It is a women's frame though, so I still added a pretty dramatic brow line along the top and had the sides of the frame cut inward pretty dramatically as well in order to accentuate the wearer's cheekbones. I also made the sides of the frames look super wavy and undulating. Clean topology is my passion. You won't get that joke unless you do 3D modeling. It's a nerd joke, don't worry about it. For fire, I was going for something that was kind of sinister looking, something that a female supervillain would wear, or maybe like an angry cat on acid. Obviously, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but generally speaking, well-defined features are considered very attractive. So these angular frames would help to accentuate the wearer's more defined features. The wind glasses are basically cyberpunk meets Elton John. Shout out to my editor, Brad, for coming up with this comparison. I wanted to make them look kind of like goggles, sort of like what you'd wear during a windy sandstorm or something. In terms of shape, these are really more of a wild card. They're definitely kind of out there. The earth glasses are super angular to look like chiseled rock formations. The silhouette of the frame basically mimics that as well. I had the frames cut inward along the top, so they didn't make the wearer's face look too boxy though. After several days of work, we've got four frames here, and after that, I applied the textures and materials to the frames. As always, there's a lot of trial and error here. Here's what the final designs look like after I did some work in Houdini. I added all the textures and stuff. They look pretty cool here, but they're gonna look even better after I add the proper materials and send them to get 3D printed. So let's hope they turn out okay. When I received the frames, they looked awesome, but the material was a lot more cloudy and matte than I would have liked. I wanted these things to be glossy as hell. I thought about adding some clear coat to the frames, but I wanted to test it on one of the samples first. You just never know how paint will react with different materials, and I didn't want to ruin the final prototypes. After about four coats on a test sample, I had something that looked really nice. So I added the clear coat to all of the final frame designs, and now I had to figure out how to fit these things with lenses. Now, if these were regular sunglasses, this would be a pretty straightforward task for any optician. But because the material is kind of stiff and brittle, and because the frames are so chunky, I was worried that the frames would break when installing the lenses if I just brought them to some random optician. Luckily, I happen to be friends with the owner of Veo Optics, and they've won the title of best eyewear shop in San Francisco for like 12 years running now. I spoke with Rena, the president of Veo, and she was telling me that she would use these really flexible polycarbonate lenses that would be easier to fit into the very stiff and brittle frames. I hadn't shown the frames to Rena yet, but she was very surprised when I showed them to her for the first time. This is one of them. Wow, holy s***, John. And then there's this guy. Ooh, this one's cool. That's when I knew I was onto something with these sunglasses. But whether they were good crazy or bad crazy wasn't super obvious yet. I'll have to wait and see when I post them up on YouTube. But sure enough, the frames got fitted with lenses without any problems. Big shout out to Veo Optics for the lenses, especially Ming. He's the lens technician at Veo, and the guy's just a master at what he does. So here is what they look like. James Peo is our critic for today. He's taught me everything I know about eyewear design. I've known him for like 10 years now. I am thrilled to see the new designs by them. And he's done eyewear consulting work for some top fashion brands. He styled thousands of people with frames, including some very, very high profile celebrities. When it comes to sunglasses, this guy knows his stuff. So let's see what he has to say about all this. Fluid design, I like it. I like, I like the angles, I like the soft edges very thoughtful i like the i like the thicker frame on the sides here a lot a lot i would decrease that arch in the eyebrow just ever so slightly to make it a little bit more wearable is that a bevel on that lens on the yeah yes it is oh, fantastic so on this one for unique like a nine out of ten well done brilliant so from this frame as it is i would say uh uniqueness nine again and then wearability as is about a two two or three 
Good job there. Fantastic shape. I like the arch in the eyebrow. I like the geometric shape in the, the nose, right where the nose bridge meets. Fantastic design. I'm just wondering how that would feel on the skin, what the smooth surface would be, and then just to soften up the nose bridge. Mm. But otherwise, I really, I think it's really cool. Okay, so out of 10 wearability, I would say if we make it a comfortable frame, wearability for the general public, a two. People are really gonna be shocked when they see this. Shape-wise, overall design and comprehension of how the face would look with eyewear, fantastic, beautiful proportions, great frame. I would like to have the bridge almost be as thin as the the lower bridge leading up from the actual bottom, the, the B measurement and the bottom of that frame. I'd like to, to, to be as thin as what is on the nose, nose bridge currently to be on the actual bridge itself, the mm. entire from top to bottom. That would be terrific because then you wouldn't have this big glob on the face. Sick. Creative, alive, fantastic. I like the bridge placement. Usually the, the, the quickest place to pick up on a set of glasses when designing eyewear is the bridge. I like the shape. I like the way they got bigger, bolder. I like the rough edges. From a, a piece that is unique and uh, stunning, I would give it a nine out of 10. Well done, well done. I would decrease the arch in the eyebrow by a minimum of 12 degrees and see how that looks. As, as you decrease, your your top line on that arch in the eyebrow it's going to actually shorten the actual overall proportions of the inside of that lens so i would therefore increase the the b measurement the shape is a little dramatic which i love for like a, a window piece for sure or like a, a piece just to show what we can do with 3d printing but on the face i think that that would need to be taken into consideration John, you're a genius, but you're a genius. <laughs> That's why I love working with you. I love him. So yeah, I, I, I think that it's thoughtfully, creatively in design. I love the way that you can just like almost see it smashing through particles in the air and then the frame just melding. Like you're traveling at the speed of light. And just, it's beautiful. Love it. I'm digging it. Um, I think uniqueness again, I would have to give you a 10. 10 out of 10, well done. And then wearability, I'm, I'm guessing wearability is gonna be another two, huh? <laughs> Yep, wearability at two. You you know, Johnny, you know when whenever you and I design something together, we create some magic. So I'm really looking forward to us creating a line together that's gonna just just be the most beautiful eyewear on planet Earth. That's exactly right. I know these frames are not wearable, but I just wanted right. to do something kind of crazy just for fun, you know? Well done for understanding. I know exactly why you created this because we're going a little bit more outrageous. I love it. In terms of the final designs, I think they're really cool, although definitely very polarizing. When I was designing this collection, I was thinking of the way that concept cars are made. If everyone likes the concept car that comes out, it means that the design was probably too safe. 50% love the design and 50% hate it usually means you're onto something. Then you tone it down for the production vehicle. One really important note I wanna make is that design isn't usually just about aesthetics. It's about function and a great user experience. But this project leaned very heavily in the direction of form and style. I'll probably take some inspiration from these conceptual designs and processes and find ways to make them a little bit more wearable. I'm excited to see if I can come up with some more functional innovations using these designs as a starting point also. I'm probably gonna make my own line of eyewear at some point and I'm gonna be working with some of the best Japanese eyewear artisans in the world to make the production frames. So if you wanna learn more about that, you can sign up for my email list below. The link is in the description. If you enjoyed this content, you should totally like the video below and subscribe. It does help me out a lot and I'd really appreciate it. I wanna give a big shout out to Stratasys. They sponsored this video, of course, but all of my opinions in this video are my own opinions. If you've ever ordered samples from a manufacturer and waited weeks for them to arrive only to realize that they're not even close to what you wanted, you understand the pain. Owning one of these printers would seriously reduce iteration cycle times and just would make the sample process way more streamlined and efficient. So if you wanna learn more about their printers, sign up by clicking the link in the description below. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I had a lot of fun watching this video. I didn't watch this video. I made the video. I had a lot of fun making this video. Seems like you had a lot of fun watching it if you made it this far, and I hope you have a great day.